Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to talk about some real simple stuff. Uh, I'm going to call this rigging for your home water. Uh, places you know what the conditions are, you fish them a lot, you know what the fish are doing. So you can adapt your gear to fish in a particular manner. Today I am going out uh, any minute now, a kayak on a smallmouth river nearby. It's a warm summer day, we got a bump in water last night from the rain. And I know that in this water, there are going to be smallmouth, where they're going to be holed up, how big they're going to be. And I have taken to fishing basically some really beefed up gear. Uh, my leader, which I just tied, I probably should have showed you that. Leader is tied out of 50 pound fluorocarbon, 17 pound fluorocarbon. That's it, two pieces. And like to keep it simple, all I do is I pull a piece, you know, my arm span of the heavy stuff, and then I pull a piece, you know, the length of my arm span, stuck on my button, <laughs> of the lighter stuff. And so I'm like 5'10-ish. So that's about a 12 foot leader. You subtract out the knots, maybe 10, 10 and a half, 11 feet. So I know that's where I'm starting, and then I'm gonna tie a loop knot on the end for my fly. So I know I'm looking at about maybe a 10, 10 and a half foot leader. Super simple, you are not turning, I'm not turning over dry flies. I don't need a huge taper. I need to turn the fly over once, get it in the water, sink it, put it in front of the bass's face. You know, get it in the strike zone quick. And the reason I'm using such heavy stuff is I know I'm not getting into fish that are gigantic. You know, a four pound smallmouth would be a trophy. I'm not fishing super heavy cover. There's not a lot of down trees, there's not a lot of stumps, there's not a lot of laydowns, mostly rocks. And so I know I can horse a fish out of pretty much anything using 17 and 50 pound. And the other thing is abrasion resistance. Because it's a lot of rocks, I want the most abrasion resistant thing I can have. And 17 pound fluorocarbon for fly line tippet is pretty good, you know, unless you want to step up to like 30, like you're fishing saltwater or something. But this is. You know, this is a lot beefier than most people would use for smallmouth, and I don't see anything wrong with that. And it's super simple. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is just so that, especially in the kayak, you get a fish on, you want to get it in the boat, get it out of the boat, get on with it. You know, you don't want to fight a fish for half an hour, pulling you around, pulling it around, you know, tipping the boat over, whatever. And kayak fishing is a whole another thing with a fly rod. It really complicates things. But I'm fishing a clouser minnow. Very simple. It's the ticket. This is the watershed where the Clouser Minnow was developed. My phone is blowing up. I'm trying to get a little closer to you. Oh no, there goes my fly and my rod. And show you exactly what we're gonna do if I can. I'm gonna tie a non-slip mono loop, overhand knot in the tippet. Our fly on. We are going to bring that tag back through the overhand knot. I'm sure this is not easy to see. So like that. Around the standing end four times. And sometimes you can vary how many times you go around the standing end depending on the thickness of the material you're tying this kind of knot in. Back through that overhand knot. Start to pull it tight. Lubricate. Tighten it up. There you have a non-slip mono loop. And I like that because it gives the fly the freedom to move around on the loop. Gives you a little more action when you're talking something as simple as a clouser minnow. All the action you could possibly get is good. So, beefy gear because I know I'm not going to break a rod ripping a fish out of, you know, heavy grass or a laydown or something. And let's clip this tag before I forget. If you know, eh, quick aside, see, now this is never going to focus. <laughs> If you can see where I clipped that tag, come on, there it is. 
you don't have to clip your tag lines or the tags of your knot super close to the knot. Uh, I think, especially from trout fishing, dry fly fishing and nymph fishing, people get the impression that you're tying tiny, tiny, tiny little knots in 6X and you need to make sure you clip that tag all the way down to the knot. And it's just not, man, I can't hold on to anything. Especially, you know, fishing for bass, you got a streamer this long, you're ripping it in front of their face. If they're gonna eat that, they don't care about the tag on the knot at all. So don't, don't even think about worrying about that, that's silly. Uh, so we're gonna, I gotta try and get kayaks on top of the car by myself, which is gonna be really interesting. And we're gonna try and get out on the water. We're kinda running in front of a thunderstorm, so we're in a hurry today. Whew, I tell you what, if you don't need to buy a giant 78 pound kayak, don't do it. Do not do it. If you're skinny little and you don't need a lot of stuff in your boat, buy a tiny little kayak. You will thank yourself in the end. The market is like full of these fishing kayaks, fishing specialized 12 foot. If you're not serious about it and you're not, you know, covering miles on lakes and you just want something to go mess around in and fish, don't do it. Like I bought a, um, what's it called? An old town topwater 10 and a half, 10.6. And it is, you know, it's super, super wide. So it's really stable, but it's only a 10 and a half foot boat, you know? It's so heavy, it weighs 78 pounds. I can't imagine a 12 foot boat. I can't imagine moving it around. It's nuts. Don't do it. Okay. these birds doing here's the situation uh, my wife and I are kind of trying to outrun the backwash of a hurricane at the moment hurricane Isaias Isaias whatever it's called um, coming up the East Coast and we're getting some of the outer edges of it and uh, it's not a good time to be caught out on the creek thunderstorms rolling and I mean you can tell it does not look super pleasant out so fishing has mostly been canceled uh, i'm gonna stop up here at a spot i like and fish for a minute and then we're gonna try and get off the water before the lightning starts well like i said the weather was gonna get unpleasant it certainly did uh, no thunder and lightning yet so just trying to get off the water quickly as possible to avoid that No fish. Uh, obviously, safety is more important at this point. Nothing to worry about, just a little rain. Go kayaking in a hurricane. Great idea, Ryan. Okay, so what did we learn? Uh, I showed you how I tie my leader and a knot, and that was it. Uh, I think the moral of the story today is be ready, willing, and able to bail whenever you can because. Uh, weather's nothing to mess with. Um, lightning's no joke, especially on the water. And always file a backup plan with somebody. You know, call a buddy. Uh, let somebody know where you're going. Uh, you don't want to be three miles out in the middle of nowhere and something happen, and you know, not have cell reception and nobody knows where you are. Like that's worst case scenario. Like you are, you're in trouble. So. Be ready, willing and able to bail. I mean, it sucks. I was excited to fish today. Uh, I hadn't fished this body of water in weeks because we just haven't had the rain to keep the levels high enough. And I was really excited to get out and pull on some smallmouth. But, you know, getting struck by lightning is uh, kind of a pretty good motivator <laughs> to get off the water. So, yeah, I think that's the lesson here. If you got a bail, be prepared to do it. <laughs>